Hello. Hello. Nice to see you. Welcome back to the bog. I mean, over the last couple of episodes, you've seen or you've started to see how wonderful a place this is, how much water they hold, how much life there is in terms of flora. And today we're going to talk a little bit about fauna. What kind of animal life lives on a bog, Nuala? Well, one, they have to adapt to the wet nature of our bog lands, yes. so they do. So one one of the most common species you're going to find out here are frogs. <gasps> we only have one type of common frog in Ireland, yes. uh, the, 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 the frog, the common frog. And of course, they've adapted by laying their eggs in water. So they, they, they love the water. The tadpoles or their young develop underwater before the adults can come yeah. onto land. Oh, and I have heard a rumour that there is a lizard in Ireland. I still don't believe this. 100% Ireland's only lizard, the viviparous lizard, loves bogs. Uh, their very special feature is their ability to drop its tail. They um, obviously they're 17 centimetres long and with a tail coming out the back, predators are going to want to be grabbing yeah, onto yeah, yeah. it. So indeed, uh, they have the ability to drop its tail. So basically you have a lizard that lives in Ireland on a bogs and if something grabs its tail, it could just pop it off yeah, and keep absolutely. going. It would be very handy if we were playing chasing in school when oh. we were younger. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. So, I mean, so that's stuff that are very well. Are there any other kind of life that really thrives on, on bogs then? Yes, hares love uh, bog lands. They've actually a very unusual adaptation, which people find a little bit disgusting in that because bog lands, they, a lot of the plants hibernate and hares are herbivores. Yes. Uh, hares actually eat their own droppings in wintertime to survive our bog lands what? all year. Hares poop. Yes. And then they... like save their poop to eat later. Absolutely. So they do. We get a lot of birds as well out here. Just to quickly move on. Yeah, from please the let's quickly talking. move on. That's uh, fierce nasty. Birds such as our curlews and our snipe they have these specially adapted beaks to probe into the wet pools out on the bog as well awesome. so there's lots of like the life that lives around here in terms of this and also they've adapted to the particular wetness of the what's here are they able to kind of drink the water that's here in terms of hares or stuff or is it oh absolutely this is a living habitat just like a you know water in a river or water in a, a canal it is fresh water so absolutely they can drink it and so and also that water is essential to a bog living it's the blood of the bog. Water, blood. Is the, water is the blood of a bog. Um, it's the one element of a bog that, you know, it, it, it survives. It, it keeps the sphagnum mosses alive on yes, the bog. Yes, we saw it last one. And all of the plants that we spoke about, they're all adapted to this wet, acidic environment. So it is. So they're especially adapted. So you've got the flora that's adapted, the fauna, so the flowers and the plants and the animals. So keeping water in a bog is possibly the most key chemical element that has to stay here for it to be alive. Are, are, can bogs die? Are bo some bogs alive and, and others active or not? Yeah, we can divide our bogs into like active peat forming and there where you've really got a pristine bog. These are really rare in Ireland today okay. because most of our bogs have been drained. Uh, so in that case, we've been draining them to see, to use for what was beneath the surface. And we have benefit as a country from what was beneath the surface. However, today, science and research, we now know so much more about the yes. ecosystem and the benefits uh, boglands give to us. So it's about getting the water back into our boglands now. Uh, so that they can reach their potential as water regulators, as carbon stores, as a habitat yes. for unique biodiversity. So with this carbon store, so obviously there's like how they sustain so much life. How do they, can they sustain our life in the future by being carbon sinks? Because even though the bogs only cover, peatlands only cover a small percentage of the earth, they still store way more carbon than all of the forests put together. Yeah, they do. And that's because they have been growing for thousands of years, this accumulation of dead plant material. And in Ireland, people have always been connected to our bog lands. Uh, so they have, we have, you know, during the war, we, we explored how the peatland, the sphagnum mosses was used as a wound dressing. In World War II, we were going through a fuel emergency and we had to the harvest was there the, for peat, us, yeah. the peat. And here we are, you know, in 2019, we declared a climate emergency and our peatlands are again here for us in Ireland. And saying look give me back my blood my water and we can help you through this emergency by being climate change champions so what we're going to do now is actually look at how we can bring or keep water in a bog yeah absolutely let's go have a look okay so Nula, we were just talking about how bogs potentially could save us if we look after them and one of the best ways to look after them is to keep them wet that's what this is, I presume. 
Yeah, what this, exactly? is, this is a recycled plastic drain block. Um, if you want to move the heather out on your sure. side there, you get a closer look at it. But what it is, is in Ireland, many of our bogs have been drained. Um, so what we want to do is as it rains, we want to keep this water on the bog. If the water gets off the bog, it means that the lifeline of the bog is gone. So by inserting these plastic dams, what we're doing is we're storing the water on the bog and encouraging the growth of sphagnum mosses here on the bog. Yeah. Many, many different types of drains. This is just one example. You could use a peat dam as well, or contour or trench bonding as well. This this method and restoration methods is always evolving as we learn more about our bogs. So obviously, this is a quite an artificial way of doing it in terms of doing that. And bogs would normally hold on to the water because it, it, they're, they've been artificially drained so that, that we can harvest the wheat. So it is that kind of we've been we've been draining the water away, and there are no drains in existence on other areas as well. So it is actually kind of stopping it getting towards our other drains. Yeah. Of? So it, on Lodge Bog in particular, there's over five kilometres of drains that were internally on the site. So if you've that network of drains. As it rains, the water has just got so many roots off the bog. So what we've done is we've blocked the drains internally using this lumber. We chose this because it's part of stewardship we want people to be part of bog lands so while people open the drains it's about people getting back and blocking the drains and giving our peatlands a helping hand and understand what you know what they do naturally yeah. and actually we're gonna and i have a little experiment now that i'm actually going to show body using recycled plastic as well as actually how bogs naturally retain water which is something you can try yourselves okay so we've got a little experiment here to show you just a little bit about how peat lands and bogs can store and hold on to much a lot of water it, we've gotten two bottles which you've cut the tops off so these were bottles that were we were recycling and we can reuse these again and again and again uh, for this demonstration which is good in here we've just got some peat soil so it's just soil that'll be taken from the bog on the top and it's left inside and it's covered all of it and we've got a little cup at the bottom here we've got the same amount uh, of, of so but we've also got some of the moss sphagnum moss inside on top as well and we have a jar or container where i have a liter of water and i'm going to pour half a liter of water into each so i'm going to pour half a liter into this first so go 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 nearly 700 and you'll see okay there's half a liter and then if i put half a liter into this So you can see with even a simple setup like this that you can try yourself at home the amount of water is different so there's more water retained in the one that has plant life and peat in it so like bogs are made up of 90 percent water so you know this is holding true that they're holding and retaining that amount of water which is important for them to live whereas just peat more of it's coming out but also the chunks even of of soil that are left in that can get washed into other things and the color difference see how clearer this is because there's less stuff in this so it's actually acting like a, a filtration system so this is something that you can replicate yourself but it helps you to understand that peatlands that are pristine that have their life on top of them are able to hold more water and they need it but it also means that that water doesn't go into other things and spread out or flood other parts of our land so sometimes stripping the peatland away can mean that other parts of the country can get flooded this is a, a very simple demonstration of how keeping a bog alive helps us but also helps it as well in our next episode we're going to look at more of the things that live on a bog and how we can actually work together to help sustain what a bog is and what lives there see you next time <laughs>